Ephesus. And this book, Borrowed Vessels, tell me how God began to point this with you in your heart. Well, it started just as I was studying. Uh, I'd read Second Kings chapter four several times, preached on it. You know, the woman who has the uh, her husband's in the school of the prophets. Uh, he dies. She's obviously young, has two little boys. I'd say she's in her twenties, no more than thirty. Um, and she comes to the prophet Elisha, and she says, "Well, you know, I've I've got so many debts. You know, I, we own the house. Uh, my my husband just bought a new four wheeler right before he died. We own that." You know, she had all these debts and they were going to come take her boys, uh, which they did in that day and time to serve as slaves. And, and the prophet, uh, you know, the prophet said to her, what do you have in your house? Now, as I was studying that, I began to see something that I'd never seen before. Uh, we, we all focus on the jar of oil, but really, to me, the biggest part of that miracle was, wasn't the jar of oil. And that's where the, the Holy Spirit, you know, can just download uh, yep. in a moment's yep. time, uh, just a, a plethora of information, you know, and just in a moment's Amazing. time, you know, yep. something that you didn't know. Revolution. And that happened that way. And I preached a sermon series and I started adding to it. The Holy Spirit started showing me things, you know, five relationships that we all need, five warning signs of unhealthy relationships, all from the Bible just took me through the word of God. Oh. And so it became a sermon series. And then as we looked at that, people said that that's got to be a book. And so then that went from there. But the springboard of the book, Philip, is, is that first, that second Kings four. And when the woman came to him, she said, you, you know, uh, I have a need. And he could have, he could have responded like traditionally do. Well, let's have a bake sale. Let's get a sure. singing group in and charge for it. And let's take up an offering and let's do all There's those things. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't. He said, what do you have? Now, some people think that's an insulting thing, but it, it isn't because it was, it was a faith question. Yeah. What do you have in your house? Every one of us has something. See, God doesn't need what we don't have. He just needs what we do have. And, you know, in my life, I didn't come up the traditional way in ministry. Um, I'm the first preacher in my family. I grew up in the West Kentucky coal field and, um, you know, when I, when I was 18 years old, I, I went to work. I, I passed up a scholarship to Western Kentucky University and went to work at, for Peabody Coal Company in the underground coal mines. Wow. And, and, and so these things that I have learned through this time, uh, it, by revelation of the Holy Spirit, it's just uh, it's different than our normal thought processes sometimes. Mm. Yeah. He looked at her and says, what do you have? Everybody has something. And I remember arguing with God. I don't have anything, God. I can't preach. I can't hear from you. I can't do sermons. I can't do that. I had all my excuses for not going into the ministry and being a pastor. And I think most people that are watching right now, we face the same thing from time to time in our life. Perhaps you had a great need and you didn't feel like that you had anything. Maybe mm -hmm. God was wanting you to do something. And you felt like I did that. You, you just, you, you just weren't qualified. And this woman obviously felt that way. She came to Elisha and says, I, I don't know what to do. And yes. I think we've all been there in life. Maybe you're there right now. You don't know what to do. Maybe you're a pastor and, and you're facing such difficulties in your church. You've never seen before. You don't know what to do, Amazing. but I'm going to tell you, there's something you have that you haven't accessed. In the prophet house. said, what do you have in your house. She said, I don't have anything. That was her first response. Then she yeah. thought, well, you know, I do have this little jar of oil. He said, good. That's all we need. Go, go to your neighbors. And I want you to borrow as many buckets and barrels and vases and everything, any containers you can get, bring them to your house. Yeah. And then, then let me know. So she did that. And she filled her house up. She came back, she said, my house has got a full. She said, well, then take that jar of oil, that little bit of jar of oil. And I want you to pour it in those vessels. Oh. Now she could say, well, wait a minute. If I pour this in, that's, I'm going to waste it. But she obeyed the man of God. She Hallelujah. obeyed the word of God, obeyed the that's in the book. She poured it in. We know the story. She filled up every vessel. Then she went back and he said this to her, sell the oil, pay off your debt and live yeah. on the rest. Now, there's two statements there. Pay off the debt and live on the rest. Yes. Yeah. And, we've, and we miss that a lot of times. We yeah. think we're the Her miracle we're was so the incredible yeah. that... She not only, she went from being repossessed by the bank one week to being on the bank board the next week. Her miracle was so big. You know, many Christians live, Incredible their stuff. miracle 
them three months and now they need another one and they need another one and they need another one. She didn't need another miracle after that one because he said, live on the rest. Her miracle was so big. But now here's the key to it. Her oil represented, was that's what she had in her house. And of course, yeah. you've looked it over. This is the first chapter in the springboard, the foundation of the entire book. Her, her oil represented her faith. Everything Old Testament is typology. It's types yeah. and symbols and shadows of the substance revealed in the New Testament. And so her oil represented her faith. It's what she had. She poured out her faith. Faith without works is dead. dead she yes. poured that out. Now, her faith determined the quality of her miracle. But now, what if the only thing she could borrow was a, was a bucket, say a five-gallon bucket? That's U.S. measurement. Uh, let's say a five-gallon bucket is all she could borrow. Would it have been a miracle? to fill up a five-gallon bucket with a lyrical oil? Yes, it would have been. It would have been a miracle. Absolutely. And she probably could have sold that oil and made a couple of payments on everything. But then a month or two later, she's oh. back to Elisha saying, what am I going to do? Listen, people. So here's the part of her miracle. And this is what God showed me that I'd never seen before. It's fabulous. You see, the first part was what she had in her house. Her oil represented yeah. her faith. But the second part of her miracle was what she had outside of her house, which was her relationships. Absolutely. And her faith determined the quality of her miracle. But her relationships, whom she got the jars from, the vessels, the buckets, the barrels, determined yes. the quantity of her miracle. And that's where the, this, this, this word dropped into my heart. Our resources oh are God. in our relationships. Gosh. God has, get, get, the only thing we have in life that's eternal is relationships. You, you know, Philip, they say, when you die, you can't take anything with you. You know, I know a guy one time where I read a story where he had a Cadillac. This is years ago when a Cadillac was the car and he yeah. was buried in that Cadillac. I, I, I read that because he wanted to take it with him. They say, you can't take anything with you. I beg to differ. You can take something with you when you leave planet earth, when you die, you can take people with you you can take relationships with you every one of those girls in Moldova, every one of those girls that you have won to the lord everyone that you're training everyone that you've rescued from the pit of hell you're going to take those relationships to heaven with you but you know also you can take relationships to hell There'll be people in hell that will be screaming to a parent or to a friend or to someone that's just, oh, or maybe to a pastor who said and said, why didn't you preach the truth to me? Why didn't you tell, why didn't you take me to Sunday school? Why didn't you take me to church, daddy, mama, a uh, oh coworker? Goodness. Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? What, why relationships are the only thing we have that's eternal. And they're the most that's valuable amazing. thing that that's we've amazing. been given in life. Gary, that is one of the most powerful things I've heard. We don't, we, we tend to singularize our going from this world to the next. But what, what you're revealing to us, and listen to me, guys, this is, this is stuff that can change your life. You can't take a Cadillac with you. You can't take your bank account with you. You can't take your house with you. But as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord, and we're going to stand together on golden streets and say, we made it. When Jesus said to the Father, of those you have given me, I have lost none. I want to be able to say to God on that day, to those that you gave me, I have lost none. And that is a transitional relationship that comes from this world into the next. And this woman, tremendous thought. I don't know if you guys are getting this. Pastors, I hope you're writing this down. You need preaching on this on Sunday. The oil was the quality of a miracle. Some have said that because he was in the school of the prophets, that this may have been anointing oil, very pure, very high quality oil. This, this could have been the best oil. So what she had in a small amount was quality. But her relationships to her neighbors and how much she had loved them and cared for them when she had and when she had a husband and she was okay and her life was stable, suddenly all of the seed that she'd thrown out there over the, the neighborhood of her life, when she needed it, when her boys went out and began to knock on people's doors, the favor 
And I am, I'm caught up with this word, favor. Let me tell you something. Favor can give you stuff that money can buy. Favor can take you places that nothing else and no one else can take you. And when she went out and began to canvas the neighborhood for her miracle, when she went out and began to believe, to say, well, the prophet said if I can get vessels in here. Can you imagine these boys telling the story? My mom sent me here to tell you that we're broke and I'm going to go and they're going to sell me as a slave to pay for some of the debt. But my mom went to the prophet and he told her to get some oil and get some buckets and, and vases. And she sent me here today to ask you, have you anything to give me? You talk about a crazy story. But they loved her enough to say, okay, I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll invest in your miracle. I'll, I'll, I'll give something towards your miracle. And that is the secret for you, pastor friend, watching just now. Don't, don't be looking at the negative parts of your church. You've got stuff, value in your vicinity that God wants you to reach into and claim and take back into the house and say, this is our inheritance.